All right, today we're going to derive an equation for the rotational moment of inertia of a long thin rod when rotated around its center. Now we know the rotational moment of inertia of a particle is given by the equation mr squared, where m is the mass of the particle and r is the distance between the particle and the axis of rotation. Now the issue that we run into when dealing with this rod is this is a distribution of mass. Uh, there are lots of little particles, or really an infinite number of particles, distributed along this rod at an infinite number of different radii. You can see a uh, particle out here has a different radius than a particle here, much closer to our axis of rotation, sitting right here in the middle of the rod. So to solve this problem, what we're gonna do is slice this rod up into an infinite number of slices. And what we're gonna do is look first at a single slice somewhere along this rod. And we're gonna view that slice as a single particle at a single radius. When looking at this equation for the inertia of a particle, we have to say the entire mass of that particle is at a single radius. And so what we're gonna do here is slice this rod so that we're looking entirely at a single radius or so that we're looking only at the mass at a single radius. Now I know the way I've drawn this, this has some thickness and there's a slightly different radius from the left edge of this slice to the right edge. But imagine we could slice this rod with an infinitely thin slice or take an infinitely thin slice out of this, it would, all of that mass would be at a single radius. And so we can treat that as a particle, just like we would in this equation right here. So if we want to find the total inertia of the entire rod, first we need to find the inertia of just that little slice right there. And to find the inertia of this slice, or of this particle at one radius, we need to first find its mass. Now, in order to find the mass of this slice, we need to look at something called the mass per unit length of the rod. That is the mass per length of the rod. Now here you can see we have some mass M distributed over some length L. Now imagine we cut the rod in half. We would only have a, a total mass of M over two. Or if I was to cut the rod into quarters, I would have a total mass of M over four. And that is just saying that the mass is linearly proportional to the length. So if we can take our term that is the mass per unit length and multiply it by the length in question, that'll give us the mass of this slice. Now the length of this slice in question is only dr, it's an infinitely thin slice. So the mass of this slice is m over l dr, and I'm gonna call this dm. This is the mass of a slice. It's not the total mass, it's an infinitely small change in the mass, or an infinitely small chunk of the total mass. Now, spoiler alert, if we were to integrate this right now, all we would get is the total mass of the rod. That is to say, if I was to look at all of the slices of rod from this position over here to this position over here and added them all up, it would give me the total mass of the rod. I'm not gonna do that though. So let's move on to the next step here. And rather than looking at just the mass of the slice, let's look at the inertia of this slice. Now, in viewing this slice as a particle, we know it has some mass given by this equation. And we know we can look at its inertia given this equation right here. So in combining these two, we'll have a mass of m over l dr multiplied by the distance between the axis of rotation right here and the slice itself. So that's going to be r squared. Now, if we rearrange this a little bit, we get this. Now, I'm not going to call this the total inertia of the slice. I'm going to call this just an infinitely small chunk of the total inertia, di. And again, just like with the masses, if we were to add up all of the inertias of all of our slices along the entire rod, we would have the total inertia of the rod. So the total inertia it's just going to be the infinite sum of all of our little inertias from each individual slice. And when I say infinite sum, I mean we're going to add together every infinitely small slice along this entire rod. Hence, our integral symbol, we're taking an infinite sum. 
Now expanding out our term for di, we come up with this. And you'll notice everything so far is exactly the same as if we were trying to derive an equation for the rotational moment of inertia of a rod when rotated around its end, or really around any other point. So what we need to do here is differentiate this problem, where we're rotating a rod around its center, from the problem where we're rotating a rod around its end. If you want to see a rod rotate around its end, or the equation or derivation for that, click up here. Now the difference between this rod, once it's rotated around its center and its end, is really just our limits of integration. In this situation, we're starting with a radius over here on this edge of the rod, which in this case is L over 2 away from the center. And we're looking at all of our slices all the way to here at L over 2 away from the center on the opposite side. Now if you look at this, you'll see I've got L over 2 to L over 2. Now if we try to take the definite integral from L over 2 to L over 2, we're going to get 0. And I want you to realize, because the radius is a vector, the radius this way is not the same as the radius this way. This is really a distance. I know we're using the word radius, so it's tempting to think of this like a circle. But in integrating from here to here, we're really integrating from a distance or position of negative L over 2 to positive L over 2. Now we can work out this integral. And be careful with the distribution of the L over 2s into this cube term here. And we find the rotational moment of inertia of a thin rod when rotated around its center is 1 12th ml squared, where m is the mass and l is the total length of the rod. Now, if you've looked at the rod rotated around its end, you'll notice we had 1 3rd ml squared in the case where we rotate a rod around its end. And that makes sense. By having a rod rotate around its end rather than its center, we have more mass at a greater radius, and therefore we would expect the rotational moment of inertia to be larger. And the fact of the matter is, anytime we rotate an object around its center of mass, we actually minimize its rotational moment of inertia. In going back up through the math, that is to say, there are no limits of integration that we could place here where we differentiated this problem with the rod rotated around its center from a rod rotated around its end. There are no limits of integration we could put in here which would produce a smaller rotational moment of inertia. Now the mathematical proof behind that I don't want to get into today, but you can try plugging in different numbers here if you feel like, just to see you're never going to get a number smaller than 1 12th ml squared for this rod. Uh, another takeaway here with this is we can actually rotate a rod around any point along this long axis, so long as we put in the correct limits of integration, we'll get out the correct rotational moment of inertia. So what we've done here is we've taken an infinite distribution of mass, take a look at the mass at a particular radius, thus the inertia at a radius, and then manage to integrate to find the total inertia of that entire distribution of mass. This is the rotational moment of inertia of a rod rotated around its center, and that's all for now.